right, guys. So continuing where uh, we left off here, I'm um, gonna keep listing this product. Uh, so one second here. Let me just go ahead and. So I'm gonna just go through the whole actual process now of uh, listing the product. So last video we went over the details of how to uh, optimize the title. And we started to cover um, how to uh, name and number the uh, images that you're going to be using. Uh, and then my battery died on my laptop, but nonetheless. Uh, so as I was saying in the last video, uh, the reason why we snip new photos, and if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, go back and watch my last video, uh, eBay title optimization uh, product listing. And um, the reason why we snip a new photo and then we go ahead and name it, you know, the title, uh, and then putting the dashes in for the spaces and then numbering the uh, files one, two, three, up to 12. Uh, the reason why uh, for that is because we do not want to carry over any cookie data from Amazon uh, or whoever our supplier is. In a nutshell, we don't want the buyer to on purpose or even sometimes accidentally right click the image and then you know go to link or you know uh, uh, just search for the image on Google uh, pull up you know the supplier very quickly I mean we, we don't want to do that you know we want to make it so if they do search the image I mean yes somebody could Google slim fast original and the whole nine yards but we don't want to make it even easier for them and then we definitely don't want to confirm uh, in any way to them that like you know we're getting this product off Amazon or Walmart or whatever it is because needless to say I mean they're just gonna go buy it there for the cheaper price so uh, we want to have original cookie data and then we want to have uh, the uh, title uh, you know put into each photo file uh, again I don't have any hard um, evidence that this works as far as statistics that I can prove to you doing it with it or doing it without it to be honest I've never really run that much of an experiment on this but I do know that the results that I've gotten um, have been great over the last few years and it, it has to be a result of everything that, that I've implemented which uh, this is definitely one of the key uh, components so you know optimizing that title as best you can uh, naming the photos uh, accordingly uh, now as I was mentioning in the last video the uh, item description or the item specifics rather unless you see something here that's really off um you know i i generally don't mess with it you know usually um i mean there are a couple of things like for example you could take out the upc and then and, and the mpn and put you know does not apply i mean you do have that option because then somebody could just search for the upc code uh, so you know that is something that i will do actually in this one um it, it's kind of a slippery slope though uh doing this these days as far as taking out the uh, uh, product code uh, or the UPC and the MPN uh, because eBay is becoming more and more specific as to what details they want from you so okay so here we go so yeah for UPC I usually put does not apply and for MPN I just leave it blank um, you know eBay they are starting to ask for this information more and more uh, I do believe that at some point in the future, uh, they are going to ask for basically every listing to have a UPC and an MPN. So, you know, do it at your own discretion. In my opinion, what I've always done uh, up until this, um, you know, point has been to leave it blank. Um, you know, I have gotten certain emails from eBay about certain items. Um, you know, it seems like certain types of items, they're a little bit more um, tense about these, um, you know, uh, specifics than others. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, you know, if it's something that you, you want to remove, you can. You can put it in. I mean, I don't think it has a really huge, uh, you know, effect uh, onto whether or not you're going to make profit because a lot of my products do have the UPC and MPN. Uh, a lot of them I, I've blanked it out as well. So, um, you know, it's just you don't want to make it easy for the buyer, once again, to figure out where you're getting the product and then, um, you know, obviously just not buy it from you. So, Going back where I left off with the product description, uh, I always at the very top put in product description. I put the uh, start off the description with the actual title that I used. Uh, and then the next thing I do is uh, put in, which actually I have a template uh, on my main account. Um, just, you know, you just drop out, drop in the uh, template or you could even save this as a template actually. Um, 
but I just simply put we we do not ship out outside of the continental US and that's it and you know again you can save it as a template obviously don't save it with a title of a random product but I have a template save where it's just this first line and then this line a couple spaces below uh, reason for this is there's gonna be times uh, that you're gonna have buyers who purchase items uh, from you uh, in locations where your supplier will not be able to ship to for example one that that happens quite a bit and it is you know part of the US uh, is Hawaii I mean many times you're gonna get an order from Hawaii uh, but when you go to Amazon or you go to Walmart or whoever it may be that specific product they will not ship it to Hawaii uh, same thing goes for Alaska same thing goes for Puerto Rico same thing goes for Guam so you know me personally I don't uh, I, I sell internationally through eBay's global shipping program. I don't ship directly internationally. I'll, I'll ship it uh, to eBay's processing center in Erlanger, Kentucky, and then from there, they'll ship it out internationally. Uh, however, um, you know, even with that in mind, uh, I still always put a, uh, a notation uh, here. We do not ship outside of the continental US because even though in my listings, I have selected where I'm only gonna ship internationally, through the global shipping program, meaning I'm not going to get an order directly from Germany and then I'm going to have to, you know, ship it directly to Germany myself and, and you know, go through the process and, and, and whatever else is required to ship to that specific country. Um, eBay will handle all of that. However, uh, again, there are certain countries that, that it falls like in, in the gray area in the sense that, you know, U.S. territories, for example, Technically, you're not um, shipping internationally because you're not shipping it to another country uh, or another another government, if you want to look at it that way. Um, however, it is still uh, being shipped overseas. You know, even though it's a U.S. territory, uh, one that I get, you know, at least a couple of times a month is Guam. Which Guam, some of the orders you get for Hawaii or for Alaska or for Puerto Rico, you may be surprised that you actually can ship that product to to uh, that location. Usually, smaller products things that are like 10 15 20 bucks whatever usually you know they'll be able to ship it amazon walmart uh actually no i take that back walmart almost never ships uh will, will never ship to, to outside the continental us basically from what i've seen but uh, uh amazon will uh at times and um who else has shipped and uh home depot as well home depot at times uh, I've been able to ship certain small products, but if it's like a bicycle or something, they're not going to ship it. I mean, it's, it's almost 90% chance they're not going to ship it. I had a, a bicycle that I sold, uh, and I actually had it initially sourced on Amazon, and Amazon wouldn't ship it. This was to Alaska, actually. And uh, funny enough, I'm just doing research, research, research to fulfill that order, not you know have to cancel the order. Uh, even though I, I was within my grounds because having this that's still going off in this tangent But the whole purpose of this is to protect you. So for example, and what I was just saying um, I still could have canceled that order. I got a bicycle order to Alaska and Amazon would not ship that item obviously to Alaska because it's I'm sure a much uh, higher uh, shipping cost that they have to incur uh, however I was able to do some research, do some research, and I was able to uh, source, I believe, through Target, actually, if I'm not mistaken, and I paid, like, a small, like, upcharge, like, maybe, like, 10 bucks or something, but I made, like, you know, 50, 60 bucks on the bicycle, so whatever, um, so I remember I was able to uh, make the transaction work, but had I not been able to do that, I would have been protected by this, this statement right here, we do not ship outside the continent to U.S., so if that were to happen, and I already get an order for a product and the product cannot be shipped outside of the continental US, I always have this protection and I can legitimately and honestly go and cancel the order and put uh, one of the cancellation reasons, the, the one of only uh, two basically, because there's three options, the item is no longer available or out of stock and that's going to affect your uh, transaction defect rate uh, if you you know select that and if you select it a few times or you have a new account especially you're gonna you know you're gonna be in trouble uh, and then the other two options is the buyer asked to cancel the order uh, or there was a problem with the buyer shipping address so this would legitimately be one of the reasons which is there is a problem with the buyer shipping address they uh, are outside of the continental US and I clearly in my listing state we do not ship outside the continental US. So 
you know, again, this is all about protecting yourself, thinking ahead. Um, it's just, again, I have it as a standard template. Like whenever I go to list a new product, I just select my template and it pops up just product description. We do not ship outside the continent of the U.S. And then in here, I start filling in all the details for this specific product. Start with the actual title of the, you know, what I just did, what I just optimized. And then from there, I go into the listing and I start to uh, see what I'm going to grab. Now, uh, me personally, I like to grab... Uh, parts of the description uh, down here uh, also I like to grab parts of the description you know up uh, up above uh, do not I repeat do not copy all of this and paste it meaning you know you want to get the taste you'll love banner and all these pictures and all that the reason why you cannot do that okay at least not like that not copying and pasting the only way you can do it is by taking a snip of this whole thing or doing it in parts and then uploading it here as images so you can upload it as you know images back to back to back um you know and basically it'll be just you know a, a static image um uh, be a basically a you know screenshot of, of what you're seeing here uh but if you don't want to go through all that to to do that and then you have to you know line it up make sure it looks good the whole nine yards um do not just copy all of this like this me meaning you know don't don't do this is what i'm trying to say okay all right, you see, you see, like go, go like that, and then freaking drag it all the way to the bottom. Like you don't want to do that. Uh, the reason why is because, and funny enough, uh, well, not funny enough, but it's a little bit funny now how uh, much of a newbie I was. I used to do stuff like this first starting out, and shortly after first starting out, for some reason I felt like I wasn't getting as many sales as I po as I could be. Like, and I just didn't understand why I was. You know going through all these um measures and, and I, I felt like i was doing a good job listing the products um you know uh, again really a a dumb newbie mistake but one day i started going through my listings you know just like looking at them randomly just trying to see like maybe i'm missing something here and i uh scrolled over these images right and i scrolled over like not these exact images we're looking at but on another listing you know images that that i did what i just told you not to do copied everything and pasted it in there and as i scrolled over it i right clicked and i saw image options i don't remember if it was these exact image options but i think it was i think so i think i actually did that I just opened the image in a new tab and when you do that Okay, the whole reason why you should not do it this way is because if you copy this whole thing, you know, the, everything here, the whole nine yards, and you paste it in, and oh, oh, it looks great. I got the banner. I got this and that. If somebody right clicks it, I think even if they just click it, but if somebody right clicks it and goes to any image options that are available, which will usually be these image and new tab, save image, search Google for image, open image and new tab. What does it do? It takes you directly to the Amazon uh, image file, you know, that's obviously on, on Amazon. So anybody with, you know, a brain, if they do that, they're going to say, okay, wait a minute, this product's coming from Amazon and that's say you lost a sale. So in a nutshell, you do not want to do that. Okay. So what I uh, do is just grab different parts of the description. So for example, here, I'm going to just start with this one. Okay. Okay, start with that. All right, and next we're gonna go up to this little snippet here. Um, okay, so I wouldn't talk about the four delicious flavors because we're not selling all four flavors right now. So just skip that. Don't want to even make people's mind wander any. Just have them focus on what we have. So. All right, da, 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 for, 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 okay, all right, that's just info about the actual product. All right, and then for this product, the last thing I would do is then select the uh, little bullet points here at the top of the list. Okay, all right, and there we go. All right, so that's it. I mean, I, that's all I would do for this, uh, for the product description. You know, we got the uh, the key parts out of uh, out of the description. Um, you know, I, I, I think we're good. I mean, you don't really need images and all this stuff in the descriptions. I mean, you can do a couple things like this, um, you know, break up the text a little bit, make it a little easier for people to read if, if, if you, uh, you know, feel that that's appropriate, which, I, you know, I, I uh, my mantra is to keep it simple, you know, 
only do things that are effective and be straight to the point you know i mean in my opinion this gives buyers a, a buyer all the info they would need to make a decision you know i mean i i have the title in here again um you know for for seo purposes but uh you know immediately just going into you know the description of the product i mean not wasting any time um, you know, some people, they like to put templates and all this other, you know, stuff and then colors and all these, whatever. Um, you know, in my opinion, I, I don't see how that adds to sales or converts to sales of anything. In my opinion, I think it's very distracting. I mean, people, especially the consumer these days in, two, in 2020, I mean, everybody has literally the attention span of a goldfish. I mean, people just want to see what they want and they want to know that it's that in two seconds and then they want to buy it like they, they don't want to be like you know going up up and down and back and forth and getting distracted all this shit they're just gonna go and find you know something else if that's the case so um i'm gonna just leave it like that uh now the uh opening bid uh so uh the way that i do this uh really is you would take this listing okay and then you're gonna go to a tool that I use, an inventory management tool. Um, now there's several out there. Uh, one that I, I use is called Web Seller Guru. Uh, there's another one called Auto DS. There's another one called DS. Uh, I think it's DS uh, Arbitrage or no DSM Tool is another one. The first one I ever used many years ago, but they started having a shitload of problems. Is Skew Grid. I don't know if they're any better now, but it, there was, it was a horrible experience I had with them, and a lot of people did. Um, about I think it was summer of 2018, roughly. And um, yeah, so I mean, you, that's one way to do it. Uh, I mean, you are going to need an inventory management software definitely at some point in time. If you're starting off brand new, like with zero listings, or you're like putting up your first five, six, ten listings. You don't really need it initially. I mean, in those in those small amounts, but once you start getting up to like, in my opinion, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 listings, 200 listings, 500 listings, you're not gonna be able to keep track of all those product prices. And it's easier to just have a tool that will reprice for you. Uh, now in this day and age in 2020, I do recommend that you use a tool that has a non API connection uh, that way, uh, you can uh, um, not have uh, you know any any restrictions put on your account potentially by eBay because one way that they're trying to uh, apparently limit drop shippers and track drop shippers even though drop shipping is allowed um, you know but retail arbitrage has has become something that they in certain instances they frown upon if you're doing something that um, you know they think is is if you're not like upholding the highest uh, quality control and, and standards and met and your metrics, uh, and you're doing retail arbitrage, like they're, they're gonna come after you. You know, what I mean, they want to make sure if you are doing it, you gotta be doing it like perfectly. Uh, so basically, all right. So with that in mind, uh, basically you have two options when it comes to uh, you know pricing your product. So uh, the first option is to just put into your repricing software if you are already using a repricing software. Uh, like any of the ones I mentioned, then you know you just put the product link into it. Which uh, I'm gonna save that for another video because that in itself and configuring profits and your and your fees and everything in uh, whatever specific software it is can be uh, very specific. Uh, there are a lot of similarities, but you know it, it's similar concepts, but each one's a little bit different. So uh, I'll save that for another video. I'll just go over the one that I use, and you know you can apply that to whatever other software you decide to use. Uh, but for this one. I'll just go ahead and adjust the price manually. So uh, the seller uh, for this one, I actually don't have them pulled up. I should have, but let me see here. All right, so we're going to go advance, and I think it was, oh, man, I don't remember what it was right now. That's crazy. Uh, man. Let me see. Let me see if I can find them. I know he had sold it like 40 times. If not, I can pull up my my YouTube video. I think it was like Shop TV or something like that. Shop TV, Shop something like that. I don't know. Let me see. All right. He had sold it like 40 times. I remember that much. 44 sold. There he is, right there. Okay. So, wasn't too hard. Shop TV four. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I didn't completely uh, blank out on it. Anyways, 24.99. All right. That's the price he's selling it at. That is um, 
what he's been selling it at for at least about two months now. Okay, so he is a seller with a good amount of feedback, uh, and also he um, has sold it quite a few times already. So you're not going to compete with him directly. If you put it at twenty four ninety nine, people are going to buy it at other prices. So, and there are other uh, prices, you know, that are lower than that. Uh, that people aren't necessarily selling at okay so what I um, I guess 1707 is what they're considering it's trending at seventeen dollars eighty four cents all right so it's trending at 1784 we can get it right now for 1398 okay so let's do a little bit of math here uh, there's my calculator nope don't remember where I Thought I had it in the, uh, in the toolbar on this computer, but okay, hold on a second. All right, calculator, calculating. One second here. All right, so thirteen ninety eight, and uh, we had what? Uh, a trending price is seventeen eighty four. So let's just see. Okay, seventeen eighty four. Okay. 1784 now with a uh, regular eBay account if you don't have a store yet but let's just say you don't have a store and if you do have a store you save about 1% so it'll be about 9% roughly for your final value fees if you do not have a store then you're gonna get hit with 10% so times 0.9 because obviously if you sell it at 1784 you're gonna get hit with 10% fees so you're left with 90% of the money all right, 1605. Then eBay uh, also takes out, or excuse me, eBay. Uh, uh, well, yeah, now because everything is actually now eBay uh, managed payments. Uh, so eBay uh, also, in addition, now takes out it's about three and a half percent out of each uh, uh, sale as well uh, for managing the uh, the the, uh, uh, the, the payments. Uh, when it was with PayPal, it was the same exact thing. You know anyway so either which way it's roughly about three percent for a payment processor so um really it's going to be then 1784 84 times 0.86 why because it's really about 13 and a half percent so really it'll be 0 0.86 0 0.5 uh but you know just put 0 0.86 so we're going to call it 14 percent okay 1534 so we sell it at 1784 we're gonna be left with that 1534 and then they take like another 25 cents out of each listing I think also in addition so another 25 cents and if you have an inventory management software um, you know all of this would be inputted into that so it's all calculated in there but so selling it right now at the trending price of 17 uh, uh, 84 would leave us with fifteen dollars and nine cents okay right now we are able to get it on amazon for 13.98 so 15.09 minus 13.98 equals a one dollar and eleven cents okay so a little bit on the low side i like to try to make at least even on a small product like two bucks you know three bucks four bucks five bucks but this is at the what they call trending price, you know, eBay's trending price right now. So that means if you do list it at that price, I mean, look at this guy. He's selling it for a few cents less and he's sold 57 of them, you know. So um, let's see how quickly he's selling them. Yeah, and he's selling them a couple at a time too at that. So uh, what I would recommend, okay, initially, this doesn't have, it's not going to be forever, but what I recommend initially is that you would list this product somewhere between this price 1707 and this uh, not that price um the the trending price 1784 so somewhere between 1707 and 1784 why why am i saying that the reason is if you list it at that price and with these other um you know with these other uh, uh things in mind that we're optimizing our listing and, and we should be able to rank in the search engine um with that targeted price like that 
you should be able to get a few sales on this product relatively quickly. Hopefully in the next week or two weeks, you should be able to, to get some sales on, on this specific product. Once you get some sales on this product, then your listing is also going to stand out more because whenever you sell one, then you have you know, this little banner. It'll say almost gone. You know, I always leave my listings to a quantity of one. So in my inventory management software, it's always set to a quantity of one as well. Meaning if somebody buys a product, it goes out of stock. And then about 20, 30 minutes later, it goes back in stock. But it's a pro it's only a stock of one. So what that does is it'll create urgency with buyers who they'll see this by default. Since there's only one left in your inventory, it'll say last one and it has the little banner because this product is also sold and in addition every time one sells uh, it'll it'll come up here you know especially as your numbers get higher you know have 23 sold uh, 57 sold look there's another guy 17 uh, or guy or gal 1748 so he's going a little bit under the trending price of 1784 and he sold uh, has also sold quite a bit uh, 23 sold in the last uh, yeah so, I mean, well, he hasn't been selling that much over the summer, but he's selling at least a couple of times a week. So every time he sells, he's making a buck here, a buck there. So, and it's not about the buck. It's not about the dollar. Obviously making a dollar isn't going to do, it's not going to do much for your life. Okay. But the point is number one, especially when you're new and starting out, building those sales and building that credibility will help not only this listing, but it'll help your overall account as well. When eBay is ranking uh, your, your product listings, uh, in addition, when you start making sales, like this guy could already raise his price, really. He's at 1748, you know, I mean, he's only selling once, you know, or twice a week or whatever, but he could if he wanted to raise this price. I mean, once you start selling and you have like even like 5 or 10 sold of that specific product, uh you can raise the price so, you know, you're not selling it for 1784 or whatever anymore. You're selling it for 19 bucks, you know, or 20 bucks or whatever. You're making some more money and the sales are going to keep coming in because you already have established that okay, you sell this product, it's reputable, people have received it, it's well received. Uh, and you can adjust your price accordingly, you know? I mean, apparently you can adjust all the way up to to this other guy's level. But um you know, I mean, he obviously has a, a good amount of feedback, 17,000 feedback. Um, he's also sold it 44 times, but I mean, he's been steadily increasing his prices. You know, he's been steadily increasing his prices as well, um, you know, over the last couple of months that we can see. I mean, he was at 22.99 for a long time, and then he bumped it up to 24.99. So in my opinion, what he's doing is exactly what I'm saying. Like, he probably started, and you can't go back that far and seeing how many times a product sold. I think you only go back like a year or six months, something like that. Uh, but if you were to go back to the beginning of when he listed this product, whenever that was, I'm sure he probably started, most likely, uh, he probably started closer to the actual price that he's getting it for, meaning that he was making less profit initially. But as time went on and he was getting more sales, he started increasing his prices. And then in addition, I see I see he keeps his uh, quantity at more than 10. So I don't know why he does that, but whatever. Everybody, you know, everybody does what they want. Uh, again, I always leave it at one just to add that urgency of like, because if he had it as a quantity of one available, he would be able to say, you know, last one, it would be, you know, add additional urgency. The only downside to that is, yes, you're not going to get people if you have only one available in your stock. You're not going to get somebody who's going to buy two or three at once, obviously. But in my opinion and my experience, uh, those people are, are, you know, few and far in between. Uh, usually people are just trying to, like, get what they think is a deal and not miss out on the deal. And, you know, most people are very short sighted. So, um, you know, I, I, I think it's still better, uh, in my opinion, the, the way that I do it, which is just leaving the, the stock always at a stock of one. When it goes out of stock, if you're not using an inventory management software initially, put it back into stock with a stock of one. Uh, or if you have a software uh, that can do that, then you just have the setting set to where it puts it back in stock. It just it puts it back to a quantity of one always. Um, so once we get all that, so for this particular one, in that case, I'm going to do the other guy was doing 1748. And he was making good. So you know what? I'm going to be petty. 17. 47 okay yes it's ridiculous but that's what i'm gonna do do not allow offers okay i don't schedule a listing start start time some people do but i don't uh, this is always going to be 
Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. This is a... Uh, ah, I completely overlooked that. This is an auction format. So we are not going to do an auction format. We are going to turn that off. We're going to do buy it now. All right. So the actual trending price uh, in that case is 2130. Wow. Okay. You know what? I'm still going to do the same price. I'm still going to stick what I said. All right. Do not allow offers. Okay. I don't mess with any of this stuff. I don't mess with that. Uh, quantity. I mean, I just leave it at one. It, set, it already says one, but let's just put that because I want to put also good till canceled. Very important. You want to always put good till canceled. Um, here. Shipping is always going to be flat, uh, uh, free shipping for the buyer. Always. Do not try to charge the buyer shipping because you're not going to get sales. Everybody wants free, even if it's not really free, if it's factored into the price, they still want to think that they got it for free. So, uh, all right, let me see here. Ship your item. I'm just gonna put, I don't know the package details. Okay, doesn't matter, it's all factored into the price. All right, so listing preferences, here we go. So. Handling time. All right, one second here. All right, so for the listing preferences, handling time, um, I always put actually one business day starting out. You can put two business days. I, I recommend so I give you a little extra time. Uh, you know your item location. Now this is a tricky one these days with eBay. Because they are now requiring more and more that you accurately uh, put where your product is shipping from. As a drop shipper, it can be a little bit hard unless you're doing wholesale drop shipping where you have an agreement with a, uh, a, a wholesaler or a, a manufacturer um, and you know exactly where the product is shipping from every time. But if not, it can be a little bit tricky uh, because of the reason that you uh, don't know where obviously they're shipping from. So we have two options here. Uh, when the item ships the first time, you can either put the zip code where it shipped from that last time uh, and then just keep a track of where it's shipping from every time. Or the other option is that you can put uh, this, which is okay. It's not even allowing me to do that anymore like that. Hmm. All right. Well, oh, it's gonna hit save. Accept returns. Yes, and you have to accept returns. It, it don't if you put no returns accepted, uh, you're not gonna make any sales. So I always put 30 days. You can put 60 days if you want. I think it's unnecessary. Uh, and then put return shipping always paid by the buyer. Now the buyer can still get around this uh, if they open. You know, if if they just decide they don't want the product for whatever reason and they open up a uh, return saying item not as described then um you know you're gonna have to pay for it unfortunately it's just sometimes uh you deal with buyers that they know uh what they have at their disposal and, and they take advantage of it okay so then if you want to change your uh shipping service i usually don't uh restrict myself to one company uh what i just do is i have a store so some things are a little bit differently or a little bit different here because with a store, you just have the option of just putting like expedited shipping, um, you know, uh, standard shipping. You don't tie yourself down to just one company. But let's just leave it USPS priority. Uh, gives you two to five business days. Uh, that's fine. Let's just leave that. All right. So we're going to have USPS two to five business days. And then we're going to have a two business day uh, handling time with returns uh, being accepted. So all right so with that uh we will be ready to list the product i mean obviously in this listing i would have more pictures than just this and, and what have you uh but that's in a nutshell what uh we would want to do to completely round out the listing so we would want to check the item specifics make sure they're all filled in uh make sure there's nothing that you know we may want to remove potentially like the mpn the upc things of that nature uh, for the description, 
we want to copy the text, uh, the relevant text uh, to uh, that product. We don't want to distract the, uh, the buyer in any way with unnecessary things from, you know, part of the description talking about other products that they might have, uh, you know, or templates or colors or any other stuff. I mean, the colors necessarily isn't a bad thing, but in a, in a nutshell, we don't want to distract the buyer. We want them to just look at this, not think about it very much and just buy it. Uh, so also put your standard clause here only sh we do not ship outside of the continent to us You still can do it through eBay's global shipping program But doing this and putting this disclosure in all of your listings will protect you uh, from uh, Cancellations and, and so forth you might have to do in addition uh, The buy it now uh, price we went over that uh, do a little product research to see what the person that you're basically uh, taking their listing info from uh, how much they're selling it for see what the online trending price is see what price you're getting it at you know determine a level where you can still make a little bit of money but initially uh, we want to focus more on getting more sales and more volume and then raising our price over time uh, so that way we can justify those higher prices uh, and, and still get those initial sales to make our listing and our account look good uh, quantity always put it at a quantity of one i never use any of this stuff so i don't recommend it uh shipping your item uh it doesn't have to be usps priority mail even though we got locked into it with this account but uh basically you just want to select like an expedited shipping service that's two to five business days roughly uh i always want to pay that you're paying the shipping the buyer gets free shipping do not ever charge the buyer shipping because they will not buy from you and uh last but not least uh Handling time, uh, I always put it at one business day, but as uh, you're you know, getting experience, I recommend you put two business days and yes, accept returns uh, within 30 days and the buyer pays the return shipping. So with that, went a little bit long on this one, but I uh, hope uh, you got a lot of info out of it and I'll, I'll see you guys soon. So till then, keep hustling, keep crushing it. And if you have any questions or comments, make sure to drop a comment below and uh, make sure to like and subscribe this video if you want to see more like this. So thanks for your time and uh, have a fantastic day.